Welcome to our today's webinar about CentoDX Plus, CentoGene's most affordable clinical exome sequencing option. My name is Anne-Marie Norman, and I'm happy to introduce you to an interesting session about how clinical exome sequencing targets genes associated with all known clinical phenotypes to achieve high diagnostic accuracy. Dr. Shivendra Kishore, Senior Vice President for Diagnostic Process Operations, will introduce uh, you to Centogene and where CentoDX Plus stands. After presenting the diagnostic workflow, Dr. Kisho will point out the highlights of clinical exome sequencing at Centogene. At the end, he will present some interesting cases as well. We will be able to refer to some upcoming questions at the end of the webinar. I kindly ask you for your patience and understanding if not all questions will be answered. Feel free to send us an email and we are more than happy to reply or contact you. I wish you a pleasant and interesting session and hand over to the expert, Dr. Kishore. Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, and thank you all the participants for sharing the webinar. I would rather be very happy that we take this webinar as a platform to share information from your side while we also share what we have learned in the last years about the diagnostic fields and the unmet needs for the customers, the patients, the physicians all together. So I'd be happy to get some feedback from you, some questions on what you feel is of importance to you when it comes to the context of genetic diagnostics. Centogene is a rare disease company. We are specializing in, um, in diagnosing inherited rare disorders. At the moment, we have the broadest portfolio of tests uh, in respect to the rare disease field. We offer around 6,000 tests. As you can see on the slide here, over 3,000 genes can be analyzed as single genes with Sanger Gold Method technology. We have over 210 panels, which are coming in three different flavors, whether it's panel, panel plus, or panel genomic, which we recently launched last year. We have also different categories of exomes and genomes. We have different uh, arrays. We have MLPAs and qPCRs and repeat expansions to measure copy numbers or repeat expansions. And on the other side of diagnostics, we are also looking at developing tests in the segment of biochemistry, which is not only helping in diagnosing, but also in terms of um, assessing the severity of the disease, drug dosage, drug efficacy, et cetera which is of primary importance to pharmaceutical companies. And in the segment of analytical tools, we have developed the world's largest mutation database for rare diseases, which contains more than four and a half million unique variants, understanding from populations across 115 countries, which is very geographically diverse. And this makes Centogene very special because we understand the uh, patient heterogeneity, we understand what is rare in specific population in order to give you a right diagnosis. On the third side, we also offer diagnostic products like CentoCard, CentoPortal, which is typically meant to assist the physicians, the patients for easy and simplified solutions for logistics and also for report accessing and the information access. When you look at the large portfolio, that brings in also a complexity because this means that the, the, the physician has to choose between 6,000 tests. In today's world, it's very difficult to go through all the technologies, whether Iron Torrent platform is better, whether Illumina is better, whether a panel is better, whether Exome is better. And these are all these technical details which we have to go through, but we would expect the physicians that they are not interested in these small, small details, but rather focus on the well-being of the patient. As a result, we keep all these small technical information, which may be very relevant in the context of the patient, but we rather free the physicians to take more actionable uh, decisions based on the results that we are giving. However, the question still remains also for us. How do we choose a good platform? How do we choose a good test? And just to give you an understanding here, we have principally, if you know what mutation we are looking at, one would go for a hotspot testing or a carrier testing. That means you know the mutation, you would ask, could you please look for a mutation in BRCA1 gene at C position 1, 2, 3, 4. This has the highest sensitivity because you have amplicons designed to look at that. You can have multiple amplicons to eliminate the allele dropout, 
on the next level, if you're not certain of what mutation are, you are looking at, especially if you're not aware of the mutations running in the family, one can typically ask based on the phenotype of single gene sequencing, which is done with Sanger, which is a golden standard still. People can also use NGS methods to do single gene sequencing. And then you start seeing that the information content starts rising. Many diseases are not associated with a single gene, but there can be many genes involved in a phenotype. And especially in that context, one would rather choose a collection of genes, and it goes towards a panel. And obviously, a panel with NGS or next generation sequencing is more affordable. And there are many uh, different panels that you can f see across different um, uh, um, sequence, uh, sequencing or genetic testing companies, and what you would see is that they may vary in their composition, they may vary in, in their content, they may vary in their coverage and, uh, and the sensitivity, and these are the questions that we have to address. Is really 100x coverage sufficient? Is 1,000x sufficient? Or is 10,000x sufficient? Or is it necessary to have such high coverages? Again, these are the questions comes in the context of whether the disease is expressed in a mosaic state, whether the disease is germline, whether the sample type is right, if you're looking at somatic uh, mutations. And all these questions will define what kind of coverage, what kind of coverage depth is necessary. On the other side, we are not looking at specific gene panels which are associated with a certain disorder, but one would be open or would like to be open to customizing the gene content of a panel. Uh, this would mean that depending on the heterogeneity of the disease, one may not just go for one panel, but would have in mind to test for three or four different panels simultaneously. And this brings us to the context of large screening over um, several thousands of genes in one test which leads us to the concept of clinical exome sequencing or whole exome or whole genome sequencing. However, every um, test as I outlined here, even though the information content, that means the, the region of genome that we are looking at is increasing, they also may have their own limitations. And more the sequencing power you are putting inside, you would see also that it also increases the cost significantly. So what is the right panel to choose from is the question. And I can outline here in the top three categories that you see, the, the, the whole genome sequencing obviously provides you with the most comprehensive information about the genome. It has a very good coverage. It has a good um, sensitivity of detecting a specific mutation, followed by whole exome sequencing, where we are only looking at the coding regions of the gene. And obviously, depending on how good you cover, the typical coverages range around 95% to 97% at 10x. The information content goes a little bit low because we are not looking at deep intronic mutations or large deletions in the introns that could be the cause of the phenotype. However, it's very likely that 95% of the mutations that we are screening for can be covered with whole exome sequencing. However, whole exome sequencing also has a limitation. Since we are looking at 20,000 genes, we are looking at over 200,000 exons the probes which are used to enrich these exonic regions might interfere with each other, and as a result, the coverages of certain regions might be difficult. And also when it comes to repetitive regions, regions which have pseudogenes or homology across genomes, these might be not covered adequately because um, one may not be able to derive the right locus from which the probes are come or the sequences are coming from. In this context, uh, going for a very special, customized, or very um, 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 compact panel is important because some of these regions can be targeted or um, can be dealt with single gene analysis kind of method where you can always have PCR amplicons sequence with an orthogonal technology which would make um, uh, the, the analysis much more specific and sensitive. Clinical exome sequencing is one of the products which lies in between the whole genome, whole exome sequencing and a single panel. So as you can see that there are around 6,700 genes in the panel, which makes it compact, even though it's not very compact, while at the same time, because larger um, uh, sequencing um, power is not being invested, it brings uh, the test to a very affordable cost. 
And also the other advantage that you can see here is that smaller the number of genes, the better it can be covered. One can play with a large number of technical parameters in, in order to give a better coverage uniformity. This means that we are not talking about always having 100 or 200x coverage, but when one can reduce the overall mean coverage in order to cover each base at least 10 or 20 times. The next question that many times come to us is that um, what is the right uh, parameter to measure the coverage? Would it be at 10x? Would it be at 20x? Should it be at 200x? And here it always is dependent on the lab, which is actually doing the sequencing. At what level of reads can you accurately predict whether the mutation or the variant that you see is really a change or is it an artifact. And that's why you see also in the column here that we are talking sometimes about 10x, we are talking sometimes about 20x, and this defines the limit at which we are looking at a particular sequence. And this would mean that in Centro DX, for example, we are very confident of calling any base, whether it's a mutant or it's actually a technical artifact, at 20x. And similarly, in the whole genome sequencing, the, the, the minimum range where we, where we make a, a significant or you say reportable call is at 10x. As a result, there are different varying parameters that we have to look at, and each lab may have its own sensitivity parameters. It, in the end, it doesn't really matter whether you're sequencing genomes at 30x or 300x if you are looking for a germline mutation, but it's more important how well is the region being covered. And here I've also put uh, the likelihood of detecting a mutation that you can see, which ranges from somewhere around 94% to 99%. Uh, the score just tells us what, if the mutation is present in the region that we are capturing, what is the likelihood that this technology will be able to detect that mutation. What is so special in Cento DX? And this is the question that we primarily would like to address here. Uh, Cento DX focuses on coding part of all genes, like exomes. However, the only difference is that we are not looking at 20,000 genes in the exome, but we are looking at around 5,000, 6,000 genes, which are actually falling in the clinical realm or which are close to be um, in few, or which are close in future to fall into this realm. As a result, we have limited the number of genes. Just to give you an example of the 20,000 genes that we know of, only 3,500 genes have been associated with a known clinical phenotype. So many, question, many would question what is the reason why one should look at 20,000 genes when these uh, variants in these genes will not be reported because there's not much known about these genes. As a result, one can always question whether it's important to sequence the whole genome or rather focus on a special region which might be uh, the, the content of the medical reports. Um, therefore, in this Centro DX, what we have done is we have made the panel very compact and we have limited it to genes which may be of clinical interest. Um, this has improved and robust coverage over genes of interest uh, compared to whole exome sequencing, as I mentioned already before, that uh, more the number of probes, more likelihood that there is interference, more likelihood that we are compromising on the coverage uniformity. And as a result, in Centro DX, you have a smaller, relatively smaller number of probes allowing us to probe each regions of interest rather more confidently and more uniformly. Um, less the sequencing um, cost, uh, less the sequencing region, sequence region, the less the sequencing cost. As a result, it reduces the additional costs and prevents unclear results. Uh, typically, in a whole exome sequencing, you would see we are getting around 60,000 variants per case. When we come down to clinical exome sequencing, uh, the number of variants that we generate per case would be roughly around 4,000, 3,000 variants per, per sample. This also reduces our focus, simplifies our filtering process, which is important for the medical team to actually zero into the causative variants. Um, at the moment, one can confidently say that this is one of the largest NGS panel, even though it's closer to an exome than to a panel. Um, it covers around 3,500 diseases with the shortest turnaround time possible. And all this is performed under a very strict international accredited environment, which is CAP Clear ISO accreditation. And one can still ask that most of the labs actually are these days CAP Clear 
isoaccredited, what makes Centogene special in terms of these accreditation. I'll come to that again when, it, when I talk in the context of medical reporting. There is much more than just following a standard process. It's also about patient um, confidentiality, data security. It's also about seeing when the variants are changing over time, how is the information being um, transferred back to the physician. And this aspect will come later in more detail. So over a view, uh, over a glance, you can see that um, Centro DX is a compact composition, so they are targeting genes associated with all known clinical phenotypes as listed in OMIM. We also know that every day the content of uh, OMIM database changes. As a result, we have to be open that new information is coming in and we are able to adapt to that. And Cento DX gives us that flexibility because we have more than 6,700 genes, which more or less is uh, open for a little flexibility with the gain in clinical information. Uh, when we are assessing the regions, we are looking at 10 bases which are flanking the coding exon to cover any splicing defect. Um, in case there is something known like a deep entronic mutation or regulatory mutation as described in SGMD database or in CentOMD database, we are actually also looking at that and, and, and assessing that if, if there's an influence on the phenotype. Uh, this is ideal for single gene disorders as well to the complex phenotype. Um, one can, what we started, uh, uh, the story of Centro DX is very simple. We wanted to have a panel which could address multiple tests. As we see that genetic testing is getting more and more complex, as a result, people would like to treat it more similar to a blood um, um, testing. Nobody in these contexts today would ask for, could you measure RBC content or WBC content or a platelet content? It's just like ordering a simple blood test where you get all the information about different constituents and then the physician is able to make a decision. And so was the similar questions from the com customers, especially in a price competitive regions, asking for, can we have a simplified test where we understand there is a genetic disease can you give us the cause of the genetic disease? And in this context, it's come down to doing something like clinical exome or whole exome sequencing, where we are open to a single gene disorder, where we are open to multiple gene disorder, or also a very heterogeneous phenotype. So it simplifies the ordering of the physician. He just has to request the clinical information. Uh, he just has to f forward the clinical information to us and from there we are able to uh, take and, and provide the right diagnosis. Um, uh, in terms of panel features, you would see that 95% um, of targeted bases are covered greater than 20x, even though in this context we are still going down to 10x and actually uh, looking at variants which might be relevant. Um, in case of um, any variant which is in a poor quality region, be it because of Q30 bases or because of Indel, we actually are confirming with Sanger before reporting. This allows us to eliminate all false positives before reporting and also to give a very uh, confident result and not miss out anything that might be lowing in a which might be lying in a low quality region. Uh, turnaround time has been uh, less than 30 business days. This is what is being offered. Typically, the tests are completed within 20 business days. Um, it's very flexible, very similar to whole exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing, where one can uh, only submit um, a single sample of the index, um, call a solo. One can also submit a trio and then additional family members which might be affected. Always the power of diagnosis increases as it's very obvious. There is an increase of around 10 to 15 percent in positive diagnosis rate when one goes from solo to trio. More the number of siblings in the, fam in the family that are being sequenced together and analyzed together, the better the power of diagnosis. Uh, prenatal testing is also possible depending on the phenotype. We do request the customers to please contact Centogene before we can make a decision whether the phenotype or the test requested actually makes, um, is it, if it's relevant in the context of being offered um, a prenatal status uh, for testing. One of the major advantages of Centogene is that we are using a very small amount of sample and typically for Centro DX, we are asking for one Centro card, which means that we are only requesting for 10 drops of blood, which is uh, submitted on a 
uh, dry blood spot card, proprietary of Centogene, which is barcoded and easily tracked by us. Alternatively, we are open to other samples like EDTA blood, purified DNA, and sometimes there might be a need to send um, cells, for example, chorionic villi or amniocytes, especially in the context of prenatal testing. And one is when one is looking at mitochondrial disorders, it might also be relevant to, to send muscle biopsy or fibroblasts, for example, for mosaic cases. So a large variety of samples can be offered. We definitely recommend CentoCard as a medium for um, simplifying logistics. I also come to this uh, uh, nice logistic concept from our side in the next slides. And obviously, towards the end, what is most important is not the technology, it's not the coverage. The most important is how we report the finding. And this is what distinguishes a good uh, diagnostic company over the other, because the borders between technologies across the world is fading. All of us are actually using Illumina platform. Uh, they all have, uh, we all have the same coverage. It's about how do you interpret the data that you see, which comes out of 60,000, 100,000 variants when we are doing a large test like exomes and genomes. The disorders that are covered in CentoDX um, is um, almost every class of disease is covered. So there's a huge um, list. Of, you can look at metabolic, you can look at neurological, you can look at reproductive, and so on. So there are multiple disorders can be tested by a single test. So, so it makes the choice for the physician very simple. One can also have a look at the genes, which are in different relevant category, if need be, and if you're interested in identifying whether the gene of your interest is actually present in Center DX, feel free to give us uh, uh, an email, and then we'll get back to you. And this is also relevant when one is particularly interested in specific genes. One can also request Centigene to please um, focus on a selected genes that you might know are of interest, which may still be of, um, you know, um, of benefit, which is not um, present in a conventional Centigene panel. The workflow is rather simple. What we have done is in terms of facilitating uh, the process of collection of samples, shipment of samples, sending the request forms, the consent forms, all through paper-driven tedious processes. We have, um, we have a very nice online portal called Cento Portal, which is an online system to register samples, to track the samples, and also to download the reports when available. And this is a system which also eliminates not only clarifications from all sides because there are many information that might be missing or handwriting that cannot be deciphered. It's a lot easier to put the information electronically. There is a, a, a barcode attached to the Cento card which can automatically be input inside the portal and that is way more easy and fast way to send and, 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 and um, transfer the information to us. Even from our side, it's a lot easier for us to push the information in the laboratory information management system. As a result, the whole process is uh, very streamlined. Once the, the blood is spotted on the Cento card, you can dispatch the Cento card and provide all the clinical info in the portal and also a small, um, let's say, certain patient identifiers like um, patient name, date of birth, test requested, gender, and this would be sufficient for us to correlate that the card actually belongs to the patient that, that, uh, that was requested through the portal. Consent can also be signed online. As a result, there is no need to um, send in the accompanying paperwork, and that keeps uh, the hassles very limited. Once the samples reach Centogene, we are entering the system, we are comparing whether the information matches. There are certain steps of quality controls we have to ensure before we start with the samples. In rare occasions, we have also seen some kind of swaps happening at the physician's end, and these um, quality controls ensure that there is uh, no ambiguity in the results when they are provided over to the, to the customers. After that, NGS library is prepared as usual, bioinformatic analysis is done, and then finally, the major focus is on the ma medical interpretation of the identified variants, and the reports are when ready are uh, uploaded in the portal, 
and ready for the physicians to consult the patients. At the same time, there might be many physicians or, or the customers who might be interested in also having the raw data in order to look at their genes of interest, which might be um, in a different, um, not in a clinical realm, and they are they, they have the access to the data. They, might they may also request the data to be available to them to work and play around with. Um, CentoDX, as, as we just put a rough um, um, graph of to show where CentoDX stands in terms of different competitor products, and you will see that CentoDX is kind of unique uh, also in its value because of um, what we are offering. All reported mutations are confirmed with Sanger. As I mentioned, there are around 3,000 genes that we're already offering with Sanger, so this allows us to choose the primers already in-house and not invest further time in developing a system to confirm these mutations. We are also um, um, facilitated with this large uh, um, oligo bank that we can go down to 10x limits where we can look at mutations that are of interest that might explain the phenotype to be confirmed and not uh, report artifacts. Um, there is a high likelihood of detecting a mutation because of the high coverage uniformity. Most of the reasons which are of clinical interest are boosted. Uh, we are using the state-of-the-art bioinformatics pipeline, which is also important to deal with such high and heavy data. Um, typically at Centogen, we have um, a HiSeq X facility, a several HiSeq 4000 machines, and these platforms require that data is, is, is handled appropriately, and as a result, the pipeline uh, is, um, is of the highest quality and standards. A clinical diagnostic report, which is validated by highly experienced human geneticists, and most importantly, the, the interpretation is done with CentoMD, that is the mutation database that, that contains all the learnings of Centogene over the last 10, 12 years. And obviously, when we talk about cap clear accreditation, that's important for us. Again, I come to the context of why Centogene is different. In terms of um, defining the quality, we have um, incorporated in Centogene a very nice system to reclassify. Whenever a report is, or variant is reclassified, we are actually um, sending the physician the information, whether the variant was earlier a variant of unknown significance, and now with the new growing information, we classify this as benign. Centogene sends the requesting physician and updated information immediately, and when the <coughs> Variants are classified from benign to pathogenic or any other classes, and information is also sent to the physician. So any reclassification is done that is, um, uh, that is unique to Centogene. We also give evidence of any classification. This is important in the context because there might be a publication. We all know there are several publications, and they may have conflicting evidence. So in order to say that a variant is actually pathogenic, it's not sufficient to cite the evidence and say, well, based on the publication, we call it as pathogenic. We also, whenever possible, give evidence of classification why Centogene believes that this variant cannot be classified as a variant of um, unknown significance while it has a certain uh, you know, pathogenicity um, uh, information behind it. And this is also supported from us by the biomarkers that we have or enzyme testing that we do in the context of several disorders where it can be that we have much more evidence to categorize um, the, the, the variants into a specific category. Uh, whenever new mutations or mutations in new genes are identified and when information content grows, we also inform the physician that this gene was not previously in the context of this disorder. However, we realized that this mutation was present in the patient, and as a result, this information also goes there. So it's not about the physician requesting us a test again but we are proactively informing the physicians about the information that we are gathering that's very unique to Centogene. Um, um, and then comes the context of how the data quality is uh, actually um, ensured, how the data security is maintained and the patient's confidentiality is maintained. And Centrogen is quite unique that we have taken extreme measures that these um, policies are, are strictly followed. 
<clears throat> starting with the logistics, that's something important that I would like to highlight here. Send to card, we have chosen this as the means of simplifying the logistical solution. Sometimes we see samples coming from um, far east or far west to, to, to Centogene uh, headquarters in Rostock. Might take several days. They might be stuck at the customs because there is a need for clearance because it's a biohazardous material. Uh, maybe the samples are not stable. Typically, when you're sending DNA in tubes over um, hot uh, months, it might compromise on the sample integrity. As a result, it's really important that we are ensuring the safety and the integrity of the sample. And one of the solutions is the center card. It's a relatively cost effective. Instead of putting the samples in a dry ice and spending hundreds of euros for shipment from express shipment over FedEx, center card allows a center card allows a very quick um, means of dispatch. It's non-hazardous. It's quite stable. We have tested the stability of samples in CentoCard for over 10 years, and there's been no uh, degradation or no compromise in the quality. And also, it's CE labeled. It's uh, available in several local languages. We have CentoCards available in over 20 languages, and um, that makes also very easy for customers where English might not be the primary uh, medium of uh, communication. Uh, it's very easy to spot, uh, so we require only 10 drops of blood. Typical competitors would be requesting 10 ml of blood, and we can see that we are requesting only 10 drops of blood, and that is sufficient to carry out multiple uh, testing, including Cento DX, and that keeps it very simple and very safe for, 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 for logistics. Once ready, the filter card, when spotted, has to be dried at room temperature for two hours, and then it's ready to be shipped in, in, in a regular envelope. Um, a few words about CentoMD. It's the world's largest mutation database. It's the medium which is used primarily for us to, to interpret the results, and that's really important for us because it contains patients from over 115 countries. And this also helps us understand the different disorders across the different populations, different SNP frequencies. So it's not uh, just we are talking about a specific uh, population. Typically in literature, it's very much biased towards Caucasian population because this is where most of the research happens and where most of the technology is. However, people um, are focused on only a specific population in the, and, the, and the variants that might be considered to be very frequent in one population may not be very frequent, may be very rare in the other population. As a result, we have to understand the population heterogeneity and which is possible through the CentoMD because of the huge number of patients that we have actually diagnosed over time. In terms of data analysis and medical reporting, uh, variant annotations are based on very exhaustive parameters, frequency, function, population data, computational and predictive data, functional data, segregation uh, analysis, de novo data, allelic data. And so we are not missing out on any factor. We try to make it as exhaustive. Phenotype is filtered by a human phenotype ontology terms, and in medical terms, a headache and a migraine might have completely different meaning and significance. As a result, we have boiled down the entire clinical information that we get to be represented in terms of very specific medical terminology, and this we call as human phenotype ontology. So every clinical information is presented in these forms, or you can say translated or converted in these forms, such so that it can be filtered rather easily by the medical experts. And um, also, whatever variants are being uh, reported are confirmed with Sanger in order to remove any artifacts. Uh, when we are interpreting the results, there are several databases that we are looking at, so like Alamut, database SNP, um, Exact, Polyphon, Nomad, SIFT, uh, Line GVGD. So there are multiple of them that we are not missing. Obviously, um, we are also looking at um, public and professional databases where um, special mutations or special disease categories are highly um, um, enriched, and so we don't try to miss on anything. Um, all variants relevant to the patient's phenotype is being reported, so that also includes variants of unknown significance. However, the research findings are not reported in center uh, DX context like as we do in whole exome sequencing where uh, research findings are reported. This is in order to make the reporting and filtering of the variants rather quick, and also this drives in the, 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 the 
the, the cost of, of the test is, is much more affordable. Um, the whole result that is generated after this is actually um, compiled in a very comprehensive report, and this is a small glimpse of how Centigene reports looks like. It's transparent, it's clear, it's, um, it's accurate, and this is very important in the context when the, the, when the results are negative, because when the results are positive, obviously we have identified the mutation. If the results are negative, it's a huge burden to the physician because they don't know what is the next step and this is typically also creating a lot of anxiety for the patients who have spent a lot of money and time and who are anxious to get a result as what can we do next. And as a result, it's of paramount importance for us that we are actually giving a very clear conclusion or recommendation that provides the next step for the physician to actually um, find uh, the best results for the patients. Just to give you an highlight, Centro DX contains around 6,700 clinically relevant genes. Well, not all of them are actually in the clinical context, but it's a very broad category which contains really all the information that we have so far till date. Around 4,000 genes are covered in this panel with 100% coverage in the coding region, which tells you the power. Unlike exomes, where every gene may be covered at around 98 or 99%, there are around 4,000 genes which are covered over 100% in this panel. <clears throat> that really gives a very, very clear <clears throat> um, support in which we can really eliminate the genes which we have tested fully. Since it's an NGS panel, the likelihood of dropout of allele is also very low. And it focuses on, if you're just giving a simple comparison, I was looking at the data today, OMIM today lists around 3,865 genes which are clearly associated with the phenotype. And that you see is a very small number compared to what we know about 20,000 genes in the, in the whole, uh, whole genome. Uh, CentoExome and CentoDX um, typically are both suitable for clear and differential diagnosis. However, there might be certain reasons why one would rather prefer CentoDX and not go for a whole exome sequencing. And both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, just to highlight what is not included within CentoDX, uh, we are not reporting any research findings. That is, where information on an animal model is there, but there has been no clear um, information that this uh, mutation or this gene actually is, um, um, is showing a phenotype in the context of humans. This, these genes will not be considered, and genes where a common pathway, uh, um, where no previous findings have been shown for a phenotype has been shown previously will not be reported. This means that if we know a gene A, which is clinically relevant, but there's no information on gene B, and I know that gene B might be a, in, in a downstream context, we would not report that. We only report a direct clinical relevant um, uh, gene, which has been well characterized in the clinical context. There are several report examples, um, uh, cases. I would not go too deep into these cases because we are also arranging another webinar where we will have an exhaustive um, a description of case reports that we have um, seen. What I can quickly summarize is that the positive diagnostic rate of CentoDX is, is slightly higher than that of Exxon. Um, when we are only looking at clinical, clinically relevant genes, and this would be around 5 to 10 percent more, the information might be a little bit biased as well because <coughs> our customers so far have been sending um, samples for a very clear <laughs> cases as well where a single gene might be involved and one may go for a Sanger sequencing. However, the NGS sequencing actually allows them to have these tests also in a very cost affordable way. So right from whether it's a single gene disorder where you have to look at one gene or whether you want to look at a panel or you would like to look at a multiple number of panels together, CentoDX offers a very, very affordable and very accurate solution. Eventually, towards the end, there are different kinds of packages, as I mentioned as well before. I would tell you what we are reporting inside CentoDX Solo is um, only considering the affected patients. We are also um, offering CentoDX Trio, where we are analyzing the affected patients and both the parents. They are analyzed together as one for uh, identifying the variants within the index. However, we are also reporting the results of the parents separately. Um, 
CentoDX plus a TRIO plus is when there are more affected uh, family members in the family. Uh, they are all analyzed together. However, there are separate reports also issued for the parents and relatives. So that was all from my side. And I thank you for, uh, for being a part of this webinar. I'm happy to take any questions or um, listen to your feedbacks and learn from, from your own experience. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kishor, for this very interesting presentation. Uh, there came up some questions during the webinar. Um, I will type them also for everyone into the chat. The first one is, um, what is the core advantage of choosing clinic exome uh, over a whole exome? As already mentioned, um, clinical exome is compact. We are only looking at clinically relevant gene. Um, the coverage is better, the coverage uniformity is better, so the likelihood of us identifying a mutation if it's present within the gene that is uh, a part of the clinical exome is much higher than that in a whole exome context. Whole exome may not have good coverage over relevant regions overall because it has a very broad scope of, um, of uh, capture. Um, this is one advantage. The second advantage is also in context of price. The lower we sequence, the lower is the cost, and cento exome um, or, or whole exome sequencing actually uh, involves a large uh, sequencing um, region that as a result the costs are, may not be affordable in certain cases for certain um, uh, customers. Thank you. There came up another question. Um, is raw data included part of the cost of the clinical exome? At the moment, um, no. The raw data is provided upon request, typically because we are talking to physicians, and physicians are not an expert in analyzing BAM files or FASTG files, and we are offering the raw data in whenever requested. There is a nominal fees attached to it, which is, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe roughly in the, in the realm of 50 euros. Um, this is just to allow the administrative processes. But hopefully in future we might have a much more simplified solution. Uh, I hope that this was a sufficient uh, response to your question. Otherwise, you can feel free and send us an email. Um, then there came up another question. Is it possible to check for splicing defects using the clinical exome? Yes, obviously we can um, look at all the splicing defects, especially when regions around plus minus 10 bases are considered because they are um, evaluated well. If it's a deep intronic mutation, then it may not be well captured. However, we are also looking at, uh, let's say, a region outside of the plus minus 10 base pairs, especially when a mutation has been described earlier in that region, um, whether the information comes from a GMD or our own center MD, we always evaluate those regions where a mutation has been previously described. Thank you. Um, I would say that uh, we are now coming to an end, and we will, uh, re uh, Dr. Kishor will reply to another last question. Um, and this is, what are the conditions under which family members uh, might have to be tested? Well, obviously what one can always look at is that when, when we are looking at a, at a cost of the test, one always would prefer to give a solo um, sample for analysis. However, the power of positive diagnosis is limited because of the information and because of the limitations in the filtering criteria. Obviously, we always would recommend to send trio samples together. Many cases might be very simple and, and clear cut, as we call, but some cases might be dealing with very, very heterogeneous um, phenotype. As a result, we definitely recommend in cases of autism, mental retardation, XYZ, where it may not be easy to, to, to really filter the variants to one or two genes, where multiple genes are involved, especially in neurological disorders or developmental delays, one would request that uh, TRIO samples are sent uh, immediately. When it's not possible, we can also request that once the case is negative, additional samples are sent in and we can uh, analyze the reports together as a TRIO. So, um, yeah, I uh, don't think that there are any more questions for now. Um, ah, no, there came one last in. One more question. What is the clinical yield of the clinical exome? Diagnosis rate, chance of finding a pathogenic mutation? It's a very relative um, 
question and it's very difficult to answer. As I was saying, the diagnostic accuracy or positive rate of a diagnosis from Centro DX is a little bit higher than Exome. One can attribute it to several factors. First of all, the coverage is better. Second is that people or other customers are using this as for also for very clear disorders where I know, for instance, if you're looking at um, a single gene is known for um, charcot marie tooth disease. Let's say if there are only two genes known, instead of asking for a two-gene analysis, one would also very gladly send uh, a request for Centro DX. So as a result, you'll see that this may have a little bit bias, but you would see, at least in our own hands so far, irrespective of what kind of phenotype is being probed for, um, you would see a success rate of around 65-60% uh, with a clear, clear diagnosis. And that's completely different than exome because people typically ask for exomes when the phenotype is so, so heterogeneous that it cannot be done with a single gene or, or one or two gene analysis. Thank you, Dr. Kishore. It was a quite interesting uh, discussion now at the end, and we are happy to respond uh, or to reply to any further questions. You can just contact us, send us an email, and uh, we will get back to you. Uh, I ask you for your attention, and I wish you a good day, morning, evening, wherever you are based. Thank you, Marie, and thank you, everyone. Bye.